Okay, guys, welcome back. Today we are implementing JWTs or JSON Web Tokens. So far, we have been using basic authorization, which requires sending the username and password with each request. Obviously, this is not very scalable, so today we're going to be looking at JSON Web Tokens. So this video is not going to explain in detail JSON Web Tokens. I expect you to already know what that is and how they work. If you're not familiar, you can check out Web Dev Simplified's video. He goes into great detail on what these are, why they're used, and how they work. Also, JWT.io is a great reference for playing around and generating your own tokens. This video is focused squarely on implementing JWTs in Spring Boot. So the only thing we'll cover is this is the basic flow. The client initially sends a post request with the username and password to the server. The server then generates a JSON web token and sends it back to the client. The client then must send that JSON web token with each subsequent request. So the actual information is being saved by the client in this example. This topic will be divided into two videos. Part one, that's this video. We're going to generate our JSON web token and send it back to the client. Part two, that'll be the next video. We're going to receive and validate JSON web tokens for every subsequent request coming in. So we have a long to-do list. First off, we need to install dependencies in our POM file. We're then going to refactor and simplify our security filter chain. Spring Boot is actually deprecating one of the methods we used in a previous video, so we'll update that. It's very similar. We will need to disable CSRF or cross-site request forgery. If you're not sure what that is, you can certainly go look it up and go into a deep dive, but basically because JSON web tokens are stateless, we don't need cross-site request forgery enabled. We're going to expose a post login endpoint and we'll need to create a model class for the request body with the username and password. That should be pretty straightforward. And then we will need a, a JWT utility class where we use the library that we imported to actually generate our token and send it back to the user. Okay, let's get started. So starting off, go over to your POM file and paste these two dependencies in. They are available in the description. We need JJWT and Jaxby-API. Once you paste both of those in, you need to do a Maven refresh. Okay, making our way over to the security configuration. In a previous video, we had set up roles and authorities to restrict access depending on who the user is. We're not focusing on that in this video, so for now, we're just going to delete it. So delete roles, delete authorities, and just to keep it simple, we're even going to delete our user. So that way we only have admin as our only user and it has an encoded password of one. Okay, making our way back down to the security filter chain, authorized requests is now being deprecated and it has been replaced with authorized HTTP requests. So we're gonna say authorize HTTP requests. We're gonna say auth and then use a Lambda function auth.requestmatchers. We're going to say slash login permit all. This should all be very familiar. And then we're going to say auth.anyrequest must be authenticated. That allows us to delete all of this. And we're also going to delete form login and HTTP basic. So now our security filter chain is much simplified. But we're not done here. We have to do one more thing. We need to disable cross-site request forgery. So we're going to say dot CSRF. And then again, we use another Lambda function. So CSRF, Lambda, CSRF dot disable. Of course, there's another way you can do this. You could replace the Lambda with a method reference and say abstract HTTP configurer disable. That will allow our JSON web tokens to work. In video two, we're gonna come back later and add a filter for the JSON web token authorization. And in part two, we will also add a new bean to handle the JWT authentication filter. So just FYI, we're coming back here. 
Okay, so now we need to write the code that actually generates our token, and we'll be using a library for this. So new Java class, I'm going to call it JWT util. And we'll define a new method public static string, the JSON web token is returned in the form of a string, we'll call it generate token, and then we pass in the string username. And we're going to return JWTS dot builder. We're then going to set subject. You should know what this is if you looked at the previous videos that I recommended you check out. We're also going to set expiration. Same thing. You should know what this is by now. And we're going to say new date system dot current time milliseconds plus 864 million. That is equal to 10 days. And then we need to sign with and choose our signature algorithm, which we will use HS512. And then our secret key will be your dash secret dash key, and then finish it off with dot compact. Okay, so this will work, but we could code it a little better. Let's define a string. So private static final string secret is equal to your secret key. And then we replace your secret key with secret of course, another implementation, you could put this in the properties file or in a configuration file. And we can do the same thing with the expiration time. We can say private static final long expiration time is equal to 684 million. It's also helpful if you put exactly how long it's supposed to be right in the string name. So I'm going to put 10 days. So this will get us started generating the token and sending it back to the user. Later, we will come back into this class and we'll have another method to extract the username. And we'll even have another method for validating the token, but that'll be in part two. Okay, so making our way over to our security controller. In a previous video, we were playing around with roles and authorities. I'm just gonna delete this and start fresh to make it very clear what we're doing. So let's add a new mapping at post mapping slash login and it will be public response entity login. We need to annotate at request body and the request body will be a login request that we will call request. This is a class that we need to make. It's going to hold our username and password. So we're going to say new Java class. We're going to call it login request. I'm going to annotate it with at data so that it automatically generates our getters and setters and then define private string username and private string password. So typically you would do a database validation service call and you would go look up the user and make sure that the password matches. That's not the focus of this video. We're just going to do a very simple check just to get us going as quickly as possible. So we're going to say if request.getUsername is equal to admin and the request.getPassword is equal to one, then we will generate our token. So let's define our error state. So if we don't send admin n1, we're going to return response entity dot status, HTTP status unauthorized with a body of invalid credentials. Okay, so this is where the meat of our application is. So we're gonna say string token is equal to, and we're going to call the util class we just made. So JWT util, dot generate token and we need to pass in our username so request dot get username and then we're going to return response entity dot okay and we're going to create a new jwt response where we pass in the token this is another model class that we need to create right now so new java class called JWT response. I'm going to annotate it with at data for our getters and setters and in all args constructor. And it will only have one field private string token. And I'll just clean this code up a little bit, delete our comments. And this is good to go. This will now generate a valid JSON web token and send it back to the client. So go ahead and run your project. So making our way back over to Postman, I deleted some of the other endpoints we had in security just to keep it nice and clean. So now we have one request. It is a post on the login endpoint. And in the body, we're going to select 
raw, and JSON. Then make sure you fill it out with username is admin and password is one. And when we send the request, we get back a valid token. Great. And just to make sure this is working correctly, let's change our password to something that is invalid, so zero. And when we send this, we get invalid credentials. Great. So now that we've sent the token back to the UI, it is the UI's responsibility, the client or Google Chrome, to hold on to this token. And every time they make a request, they need to send this token in the header. So that's what we'll cover in the next video. How do we validate it and extract relevant information? Okay, I'll see you then.